this uh, cross validation method you might have already used it if you have gone through some of my videos in um, uh, on different case studies I have mostly used the holdout method uh, while demonstrating the cross validations so wh what you essentially do in holdout method uh, cross validation is that you divide or you split the data the sample data into two types or two uh, sub samples um, the first sub sample you call it as a training sample you use that sample to build a model and you have another sub sample which is not part of the training sample and you call that as a holdout sample and you test your model you test your model in the holdout sample we also call that as testing sample if the model statistics are consistent across these two samples we are uh, you know confident about the fact that the model is going to perform well uh, in in uh, the new data it's not just the training data on which the model is performing well it's also going to uh, you know do well in the new data so normally we go ahead with 50 to 70 percent of the data um, in the training sample and you know 30 to 50 percent as the holdout sample although these numbers are not uh, you know there is no thumb rule as such but yeah normally the industry practice is to take 50 to 70 or 80 percent as training sample and 20 to 50 percent as the holdout sample so if you're building a, a regression model just check out the mean square error um, the root mean square error for uh, training sample and also check out check it check that out for the holdout sample and if they are very similar to each other then the model is not an overfit uh, otherwise you have to go back and redo or rebuild your model ensure that the model is uh, the sample that you are using is representative and so on um, one bad thing or one um, you know disadvantage of using holdout method is that it is prone to uh, sample bias because you do not actually decide which observations are going to be in the training sample and which observations are going to be in the holdout sample you do it randomly you just you know uh, do a random sampling you do a random sampling in finding out which sample is going to be in the training sample and which uh, sorry which data point is going to be the training sample and which data point is going to be in the holdout sample and that's not a very uh, representative uh, so to say because if you change the uh, uh, splitting pattern you probably will get a different result the chances are low though but there are there, there is definitely a chance um, that you you will get a different result for instance you just took this sample okay this one as the training and this portion as the, uh, the sample in the uh, extreme left this 30 percent of the sample as the validation sample you probably get a different result than what you had uh, got in the previous one so this is prone to sample bias so 